Okay, so let's talk about the configuration of Librium MS for a bit. So traditionally, most of the configuration was held in a file called config.php. Uh, that file is on the root of the Librium MS directory here. So uh, if we do nano config.php, uh, here it is. Um, and you'll still find references to this file in the Librium MS docs and other tutorials online, such as mine. Um, but there's a couple issues uh, with doing the configuration this way. One, if you back up your Librium installation, you should probably include this file too. Um, and while you might not necessarily lose any data if you don't include this file, it will be a little annoying to go and figure out all these settings that you had set. Um, two, it's probably not the most secure thing in the world to have just a, a plain text config file uh, on your system. Um, that one probably could be argued, but three, you can actually break your entire Libri NMS installation if you just mess up this file a little bit, uh, like missing a semicolon that I'm sure 100% of PHP developers are guilty of at least once in their life. Um, so let's just get rid of the semicolon real quick and save the file and refresh, and wow, uh, I get a bunch of phone calls now. So I'm going to put that back. Refresh, and there we go. And four, and probably the most annoying of all this, is that if you run distributed pollers, you should really have all your settings uh, in the config.php file synced between all your other pollers. Um, you can do things like ignore interfaces, uh, and if the other pollers don't know about those interfaces you set, uh, they're not going to ignore them. So, um, yeah, you really need to keep them in sync. Uh, but the good news is, if you install LibriNMS today, all of these issues are fixed because 100% of the configuration is now held in the database. In fact, if you look at this config.php file after a fresh installation, all the lines are commented out. And this is great because now if I back up my database, I'm also backing up my configuration with it. So when I restore my database, I'm also restoring my configuration. Um, you could argue that there's probably another layer of security uh, if you have to break into your database also. And we have better control uh, now of user input into configuration. So there's less likely a chance of me uh, inputting something uh, that could break uh, the web GUI completely, like just editing this config.php file is. And finally, all the distributed pollers now need to talk back to the database. That's a requirement. So if they can talk to the database, they can read the config configuration. It's that simple. Okay, so all the settings that you set in the web GUI are being written to the database. All these settings that you see in here, uh, every single one of these is written to the database. Now, if you're starting out fresh, you should not be setting any settings in config.php, hence why the entire file is commented out right now. Uh, you should be setting everything in the web GUI. But if you have an installation that's been around for a while, you might have uh, settings in here that are grayed out. Uh, and, or that you can't set. Um, and that's because they're set in the PHP file. Um, so if we go over here, you can see that this RRD purge is this setting in the web GUI and the config.php file takes precedence. So all I really need to do is comment this out and uh, save the file. And now it'll allow me to edit the web GUI portion of this to whatever I want. Now, you might have noticed, um, especially if you have an older installation, that not every single setting you've set in your config.php file is available in the web GUI. And I believe the reason for this is that no one's gotten around to doing it yet. Um, it's a community project and people just work on it whenever they have time. So I'm sure eventually probably all the settings will get set in here somewhere, maybe. Uh, I know all the major ones are, but, you know, there is a few in there that I have set um, that could probably be in there, too. Uh, but luckily, we have another way of writing configuration to, into the database, and that's with this lnms command. So if we go back into our uh, shell here, we can go to lnms, and we can hit tab here, uh, and there's actually quite a bit, 123 bits of things we can do with this thing. Um, so uh, one we're going to be focusing on today is the config uh, command. Uh, there is, I was planning on making an entire video about this um, because there's just so much you can do with it, but uh, even I don't even know not what half of these are, and most of these you don't really even need for just day-to-day -day operations or mostly for developing and um, other things. Uh, but if you did have like a, your database totally broke you could probably fix it with this command um, but we're just going to be focusing on the config command here config get and config set so if we do lnms config get 
this is going to air out. And the reason why that is, is it wants you to type in the next setting uh, in here. But what we can do is we can do a dash dash dump, and this will dump the entire database configuration uh, out, out to the uh, terminal. So if we do that, we get the entire uh, configuration in a JSON for, uh, format, but it's not really formatted correctly or looks good to us uh, on a computer screen. So I'm going to install this uh, JSON processor called JQ. I think there's probably other J JSON processors out there you can use. So if you have one of those, uh, you can use that also. But uh, I'm going to install this one here, JQ. And all I, I, the only reason I'm installing this is just so when I dump it, it looks better on the screen uh, instead of like that. So that is installed. So let's go back to our Librium MS user. Config, get, dump, and we're going to pipe it to JQ and dot is the most simplest filter. I guess it's just taking the input of JSON and just outputting it nicely. All That's all it's doing. You can do a whole bunch with JQ. I think you can, you can do all sorts of filtering and tweaking and stuff, but I mean, for, for this purpose, I'm just getting it looking nice. So there we go. So now you can see it looks a little bit nicer here uh, in the GUI if you just want to dump it out. Um, so I did notice when I was looking at this, I was like, okay, well, here's how you see all the configuration in a nice format. But if you go over here to Global 2, uh, this is pretty much doing the same exact thing. Um, this is just laid out a little bit differently, like SNMP traps here. It's in dot format over here. SNMP traps dot event logged and event log detail. You can see that it's SNMP traps, but you know, they have it one space under, uh, whatever you want to call it. One, one uh, node under, I don't know what JSON's terminology is. <laughs> Somebody out there knows. Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's all the settings in here or in here. And you know, if you wanted to maybe just keep this as a backup offsite or something, you could output it to a file too, like this. Uh, config, let's just say Ellen, ms config dump dot json okay so cat lnms config there we go so now we have it in a file but off track here let's go back and find so we so dumping the whole config is fine or whatever that's kind of nice but we usually want to just deal with a certain section of the config so let's just do config get auto discovery so now I'm just looking at the auto discovery section of the the entire config I had over here. I could probably find it. Let me see if I can find it here. Most of this configuration is default, so um, don't worry about. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I got under a ton of stuff. I was actually shocked when I was scrolling through this <laughs> earlier uh, how bad it was. But yeah, see, I jumped the whole thing, and basically all I'm doing is getting this auto discovery and everything in these curly brackets here. Uh, so I'm when I do config colon get space auto discovery i'm grabbing all that i could do this one and just get that value or bad if let's just do bad if see i'm just getting those values in there so i'm going to just mess with the auto discovery one here and we can even drill down further by doing like dot bgp to go one more level down and see what that's set to it's set to true you know ospf you know we can do nets exclude and see all those. So that's how you could see individual configurations uh, within the Librium MS LNMS command. But uh, if we want to change some of these, we can do the same, pretty much the same thing. We can do set auto discovery dot BGP to false. And then we'll just go back and get that one. And now we can see it's set to false. It was set to true up here. Okay, so, uh, and then we can go back and just see the whole thing again. Uh, so we had BGP false, you know, we could change OSPF and XDP to false too. But um, say you wanted to, so these are the all the ones we're going to exclude uh, scanning. We don't want to try to add anything in these subnets. So if we wanted to add another subnet to this list, we could simply do autodiscovery.nets exclude dot plus, And that basically means we're going to add uh, into this list. That's that's a list in Python. I don't know what that terminology is in JSON, so that's why I'm calling it a list. Um, but yeah, we want to add to that array or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, list day 192, 168, uh, let's say 3.0/24. And I messed up something. Set. There you go. So now if we get, let's just get this one that excludes. And we can see we've added 192.168.3.0 in there. 
So generally going forward as of right now, I would say if you ever see anything that references a, to setting a value in the config.php, uh, either set it in the web GUI or set it with this LNMS config command instead. Now I will say there is one setting that I'm pretty sure you can't put in the database yet, and that is the distributed polar name. And I'm not even sure how that would work if you tried to put that in the database. So um, yeah, I, I, I thought about, I looked at the code for that and it looked pretty easy to move it over to the .env file. So I, I was gonna try and work on that uh, maybe soon, but okay, I wanted to talk about one more thing with LNMS config set. So if you do LNMS config set, um, you might come across some documentations uh, that tell you to set a setting that's not working. Like, let's just say the setting was fake setting. <laughs> Um, you might try to do fake setting and set it to true, but this thing is going to tell you that it's not a valid setting, but you're reading in some documentation somewhere that, or some tutorial that says it definitely is a valid setting. Um, and I believe this is because they haven't written validators for all these uh, commands yet. So there is an option in here to ignore uh, those checks and add it into the database regardless uh, of what it is. Now, I'm going to put this in the database here, and it does absolutely nothing, and it won't break anything because nothing is reading this value. Uh, in the database, so I can still get in here and, and view all my stuff fine, and I can do LNMS config get fake setting. And if I wanted to delete that, I could just do set fake setting. And that'll put it back to its default value, which was nothing, so there we go. Okay, I just noticed when I was editing the video that all my graph data broke, but that wasn't because I was putting in that fake setting command. Uh, that was simply because I had this RRD cached D uncommented out in here, um, and basically Liberty MS is looking for this RRD cache service that wasn't working, so that's why that wasn't working. So yeah, don't worry, I did not break it by adding that uh, command in there. That command is still in there. Thank you uh, again for watching.